All right, so we're driving deep into Microsoft Ignite 2024. Satya Nadella's keynote. Yeah. It wasn't just about AI. It was about how AI is going to rewrite like the rules of business yeah. and sooner than you might think. Yeah. Uh, we've got his keynote transcript, mm -hmm. some in-depth articles, even some analyst reports. Nice. And let me tell you, things are about to get interesting. What struck me is how Nadella tackled like the elephant in the room. Mm. You know, he acknowledged that with all the hype around AI, like it's tempting to think, okay, is this another bubble? Right. But he frames it in a way that really resonated. Okay. He talks about these scaling laws, almost like Moore's law on steroids. Okay. He's suggesting that AI isn't just getting better, it's improving at an accelerating rate. That's a big claim, doubling in capability every six months. Right. I mean, even he admits that this pace might not be sustainable forever. Exactly. He encourages skepticism. He yeah. says we should be questioning these assumptions, pushing the boundaries. And you know what? I think that's brilliant. Yeah. It creates this atmosphere of like grounded excitement. So amidst all this AI frenzy, where does Microsoft actually fit in? Nadella laid out a clear vision with three core platforms, Copilot, Copilot Devices, and the Azure AI stack. Mm. It's like they're building a whole ecosystem designed to bring AI to like every corner of the business world. Let's start with Copilot. Okay. Nadella calls it the UI for AI, mm. which sounds pretty abstract. Yeah. What does that even mean in practical terms? Think about it this way. We went from typing commands to clicking icons. Uh-huh. And now we're moving toward interacting with technology using natural language. Okay. Copilot is designed to be that bridge. Yeah. That intuitive layer that lets us harness the power of AI without needing to be like coding wizards. So it's like having an AI assistant that understands what you need and helps you get it done. Exactly. And here's where it gets interesting. He emphasizes that the value of Copilot isn't just in the technology itself, it's in how people use it. The more people adopt Copilot. Yeah. The more data it gathers, the smarter it gets. It's like a network effect for AI. I see. So it's not a static tool. Right. It's constantly evolving based on how people interact with it. Right. He also highlighted how Copilot is designed to be extensible. Okay. You can build on it, customize it, yeah. create specialized agents to automate specific tasks. Think of it like having an army of AI assistants, Wife. each with its own like unique skill set working for you. Yeah, that sounds impressive. Yeah. But how do businesses actually measure the return on investment with all this AI? Right. It can't just be about cool features. Right. He addressed that head on. Microsoft is introducing Copilot Analytics. Okay. A tool specifically designed to track how Copilot usage translates into tangible outcomes. Okay. They want businesses to be able to see exactly how this AI is impacting their bottom line. Okay. So they're not just throwing AI at the wall and seeing what sticks. Right. They're actually thinking about how to measure its real world impact. Exactly. And to drive that point home, they shared some compelling examples of companies already using Copilot to achieve remarkable results. Like who? Give me the highlights. Well, the Bank of Queensland group is a great example. They were facing this huge challenge of analyzing thousands of documents for risk assessment. Okay. It was a process that used to take weeks. Yeah. With Copilot, they've managed to condense that down to a single day. Whoa. That's a massive time saving. But what about industries beyond finance? Vodafone is another interesting case. They're using Copilot and Azure AI to completely revamp their customer service. Hmm. They handle over 45 million conversations every month. Wow. Copilot is helping them personalize interactions, answer common questions, and even guide customers towards like self-service options. So it's not just about cutting costs. Right. It's about improving the customer experience. Exactly. They've seen a significant reduction in average hold times, which makes customers happier. Yeah. And it allows their human agents to focus on the more complex issues. All right. So Copilot is clearly a big deal. But how is it actually integrated into the tools people use every day? Right. Nadell talked about Copilot in action, focusing on the Microsoft 365 suite. Yeah, this is where it gets really interesting. They showed Copilot woven into everything from Word and Excel to Teams and even PowerPoint. Okay. They're not just adding AI features. Yeah. They're fundamentally changing how we work with these tools. Okay. Give me some specifics. Okay. What stood out to you? Well, for starters, they unveiled Microsoft Copilot pages. Okay. And let me tell you, this is where things start to feel a little bit like magic. Okay. 
Imagine a document editor where you can create dynamic charts, insert interactive code blocks, yeah. and even pull in information from all sorts of sources, Wow! all controlled by natural language prompts. Mm. Nadella himself uses it to prep for meetings. Wait, so he's not just talking about this stuff. Yeah. He's actually using it in his daily workflow. He showed it live. He gave Copilot a simple prompt about a client meeting and it instantly pulled in relevant details from the web, LinkedIn, internal documents, wow. you name it. It was like having a research assistant working at warp speed. That sounds incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. What about the other Microsoft apps? Well, Teams got a serious upgrade. Okay. Copilot can now analyze past meeting transcripts and even answer questions about presentations that are being shared on screen. Uh -huh. It's like having an AI teammate who's always up to speed on your projects. Mm. And then there's Word and PowerPoint. Yeah. Copilot can help you generate drafts based on existing documents. Okay. Create presentation outlines from a simple prompt. No more staring at a blank page. So it's like having an AI writing partner. I can definitely see how that would be helpful. And even Outlook got some love. <sighs> Nadella highlighted this prioritize inbox feature. Oh, nice. Copilot analyzes your inbox based on content and sender importance. Hmm. So you're always focusing on the most critical messages first. It's like having an AI assistant that filters out the noise and it helps you manage your time more effectively. Okay, color me intrigued. But for me, the real test is Excel. I mean, it's the workhorse of the business world. How are they bringing AI into that? This is where Nadella really leaned into the revolutionary language. Oh. And honestly, I think he's right. Okay. Imagine being able to give Copilot a high-level prompt, like how can we improve production rates, right. and having it generate a strategic analysis plan, execute it, oh. and deliver visualizations and actionable insights in minutes. Whoa, hold on. Are you saying that Copilot in Excel can essentially think like a data analyst. It's not about replacing analysts. It's about giving everyone access to those data-driven insights. Right. It's like democratizing data analysis, making it accessible to anyone who can use a spreadsheet. That's a bold claim. Yeah. But if they can pull it off, it could be a game changer for businesses of all sizes. And Nadella didn't stop there. Oh, no. He went on to explain how you can actually extend Copilot with actions and agents, mm -hmm. creating this truly customizable AI ecosystem. Okay, now you've got my attention. Tell me more about this. Think of Copilot actions like supercharged Outlook rules. Okay. They can automate multi-step tasks across Microsoft 365. Yeah. Want to automatically save attachments from certain senders to a specific folder. Yeah. And then trigger a notification in Teams. Yeah. Copilot actions can handle that. That's pretty slick. What about these agents you mentioned? They're where things get really powerful. Okay. He talked about team-specific agents. Imagine adding a facilitator agent to your team's meetings to keep discussions on track. Okay. Or a project manager agent in planner to handle workflow automation. It's like having a team of AI assistants working alongside you. So it's not just about individual productivity. It's about enhancing team collaboration. Exactly. And he didn't forget about SharePoint. Every SharePoint site will now have a built-in agent giving you instant access to information in your knowledge base. It's like having an AI librarian at your fingertips. This all sounds incredibly powerful, but it also seems like it could get pretty complex. That's where Copilot Studio comes in. Okay. Nadella emphasized how simple it is to create your own Copilot agents. He even compared it to creating a Word document. So you're saying that you don't need to be a programmer to build your own AI agents. That's the message they were sending loud and clear. Wow. And he introduced the concept of autonomous agents, which are agents that work in the background proactively handling tasks without you needing to lift a finger. He gave the example of a sales qualification agent that autonomously researches leads and drafts personalized emails. Okay, so now that's just straight up science fiction becoming reality. I know, right? Yeah. And to top it all off, Nadella highlighted the growing partner ecosystem. Okay. Companies like Adobe, SAP, and ServiceNow are building their own agents and connectors for Copilot. So it's not just a Microsoft thing. It's becoming a platform for AI innovation across industries. Exactly. It's becoming this interconnected web of AI-powered tools and services. Well, we've covered a lot of grounds with Copilot, and it's clear that Microsoft is betting big on it. But what about the hardware side of things? Right. Nadella also talked about Copilot devices. What's the story there? 
he shifted the focus to how AI and the cloud are fundamentally changing the way we think about PCs. Mm -hmm. He introduced this concept of Copilot Plus PCs, which are a new class of Windows devices specifically designed to leverage the power of the cloud and edge computing for AI workloads. Okay, so it's not just about software. Right. They're actually building specialized hardware to run these AI applications. Right. They're packed with powerful NPUs, which are specialized processors designed for AI tasks, and they're optimized for battery life. Okay. So you're not tethered to an outlet. So they're like AI-powered laptops on steroids. He also touched on the growing popularity of cloud PCs, building on the success of Windows 365, yeah. which lets you stream a personalized Windows desktop to any device. He announced this new device called Windows 365 Link, okay. a purpose-built secure device specifically designed for Windows 365. It's set to launch in April 2025. So it's like a thin client that's optimized for cloud computing. Exactly. And of course, Nadella emphasized the importance of security. Yeah. He highlighted the Windows Resiliency Initiative, which is all about making Windows secure and reliable for mission-critical workloads. Uh. He specifically mentioned Windows Hot Patch, which applies security updates without requiring restarts. That's a huge deal for businesses that can't afford downtime. Right, so they're thinking about both the power and the security of these AI-powered devices. But what about the developers who are actually building these applications? Right. What's in it for them? That's where the Azure AI stack comes in. It's the foundation for AI innovation. Okay. Think of it as the platform that provides developers with the tools and infrastructure they need to build their own co-pilots and AI agents. So it's like the engine that powers all this AI magic. Exactly. He started by underscoring Azure's massive global infrastructure. They've invested heavily in data centers, sustainable construction practices, and even advancements in network technology like hollow core fiber for faster connectivity. Okay, so they're building the foundation for a future where AI is everywhere. Sure, what else did he highlight? He announced Azure Local, which extends Azure services to hybrid, multi-cloud, and edge locations. Okay. This allows businesses to run mission-critical workloads, including AI workloads, wherever they need to. Yeah. It's all about flexibility and resilience. So they're not just building a cloud. They're no. building an AI ecosystem that spans from the cloud to the edge to on-premises. Right. And then he got into silicon innovation. Okay. Nadella revealed that Microsoft is getting serious about building their own chips. Mm -hmm. He introduced their first in-house security chip, Azure Integrated HSM. Okay. which will be included in all new Azure servers for enhanced security. So they're not just relying on off-the-shelf components. They're actually designing their own hardware to optimize for security and performance. Yes. And he also announced Azure Boost, which features their first in-house DPU, a specialized processor designed to accelerate data-centric workloads. Mm. They're promising significant performance gains, which is crucial for AI applications that demand a lot of processing power. Okay, so they're building the chips the infrastructure of the platforms. This is a pretty comprehensive approach. It is. But what about the data itself? He highlighted Microsoft Fabric as the core data platform for AI. It unifies data and analytics into one experience. Mm -hmm. He even announced the integration of SQL Server into Fabric, creating a single platform for both operational and analytical workloads. This is huge for data management and analysis. So they're creating a one-stop shop for all things data. Exactly. And then he unveiled Azure AI Foundry, which he positioned as the app server for the AI age. Okay. It unifies models, tooling, safety, and monitoring solutions. He emphasized model choice, offering over 1,800 models from providers like OpenAI, Meta, and Cohere. Wow. It's like they're creating a marketplace for AI models. So they're not just building their own models. They're providing a platform for others to share and access models. Yes. It's about creating an ecosystem where everyone can benefit from the latest AI advancements. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But he didn't just talk about business applications, did he? No. Nadella dedicated a significant chunk of his keynote to AI for science. He did, and this is where AI's potential truly shines. He talked about how AI is transforming scientific research, oh. moving from static to dynamic prediction. Yeah. This means scientists can now understand not just the shape of molecules, but their movement and interactions. Wow, that sounds incredibly complex. How is AI actually being used in scientific research? He shared some amazing examples. Novartis is using generative AI to design new drug molecules. 
accelerating drug discovery. Wow. Nissan is partnering with Microsoft to create a model that predicts EV battery performance over time, improving accuracy by a staggering 80%. Wow. And the Institute for Protein Design is utilizing Azure to engineer new proteins from scratch with potential applications in medicine and sustainability. Whoa, it sounds like AI is already having a major impact on scientific discovery. What about quantum computing? Nadella emphasized the potential of quantum computing to accelerate scientific discovery even further, Yeah. highlighting Microsoft's progress in developing reliable qubits. He even announced a partnership with Atom Computing to create a commercial offering combining Azure Quantum with Atom's hardware. So they're not just thinking about today's AI challenges. They're already looking ahead to the next generation of computing technologies. Exactly. It's incredible how much they covered in a single keynote. It was a whirlwind of information, but Nadella managed to weave it all together into a compelling narrative about the future of AI and its potential to transform not just businesses, but the world. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground in this first segment. We've explored Microsoft's vision for AI with Copilot, Copilot devices, and the Azure AI stack, mm -hmm. but we've only scratched the surface. Right. In our next segment, we'll dive deeper into the practical applications of Copilot. We'll explore how businesses are actually using it to streamline operations, enhance customer experiences, and unlock new levels of efficiency. It's going to be fascinating to see how these AI tools are being used in the real world yeah. to solve real world problems. It is. Stay tuned. Yeah. All right, let's shift gears from the big picture and zoom in on how companies are actually using Copilot to get things done. Yeah. We were blown away by some of the real-world examples Nadella shared, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to unpack them for you so you can see how this AI is already making a difference. What I found most compelling were the stories from industries that don't always scream cutting-edge tech, like the Bank of Queensland Group, who were drowning in paperwork, yeah. trying to analyze thousands of documents for risk assessment. Yeah. It's the kind of task that used to take weeks of painstaking manual effort. I can't even imagine sifting through that much paper. So how did Copilot change the game for them? They managed to automate a huge chunk of that process. Mm. Tasks that used to take weeks are now done in a single day. Wow, that's a serious productivity boost. But it's not just about speed, is it? No, it's also about accuracy. Copilot can process and analyze vast amounts of data, yeah. spotting patterns, and identifying potential risks far more efficiently than a human ever could. Right. This gives financial institutions a level of confidence and insight they simply didn't have before. So it's like having an AI risk analyst working alongside your team. Exactly. And the potential applications in finance go far beyond risk assessment. Think about fraud detection, loan processing, even investment analysis. Mm. Imagine giving Copilot access to market data, financial reports, economic indicators. Yeah. It could potentially uncover opportunities that humans might miss. It's almost like giving every financial analyst a superpower. But let's move beyond the world of numbers. Nadella also highlighted how Copilot is transforming customer service, an area where the human touch is often seen as essential. Tell me about Vodafone's experience. Vodafone was facing a classic customer service challenge. They handle over 45 million conversations every month. Wow. It's a logistical nightmare. Yeah. They were looking for a way to make the experience more efficient and personalized for customers. So how did they bring AI into the equation without losing that human touch? It's not about replacing humans. It's about augmenting their abilities. Okay. Copilot handles the routine tasks, answering frequently asked questions, guiding customers through self-service options, yeah. freeing up human agents to focus on the more complex and nuanced issues. It's like having an AI-powered triage system, uh -huh. making sure customers get the right level of support quickly and efficiently. And the results speak for themselves. They've seen a significant decrease in average hold times, which makes customers happier. Yeah. And their agents are less stressed and more empowered to tackle the tougher problems. It's a win-win. I'm starting to see how this AI could fit into so many different aspects of a business. But what about industries that are pushing the boundaries of human knowledge, like scientific research? Nadella touched on some fascinating applications in that area. This is where it gets really exciting. Oh, yeah. Nadella talked about the shift from static to dynamic prediction. Imagine being able to not just predict the shape of molecules, but to actually understand their movement and interactions. Wow. This has huge implications for fields like drug discovery, materials science, even renewable energy. He mentioned Novartis using generative AI to design new drug molecules. Yeah. 
That sounds incredible. What does that even look like in practice? Traditional drug discovery is incredibly slow and expensive. Yeah. You're essentially testing thousands, even millions of compounds in the lab to see if they have the desired effect. Generative AI flips the script. Scientists can now train AI models on massive data sets of molecular structures and properties. The AI can then virtually design and test new molecules, significantly speeding up the discovery process. It's amazing. It could potentially lead to the development of new drugs and therapies for diseases that currently have no cure. Exactly. And it's not just limited to medicine. He also talked about Nissan using AI to predict the performance of EV batteries over time. Okay. They've seen an 80% improvement in accuracy. Wow. This could lead to longer lasting, more efficient batteries, which is a game changer for the adoption of electric vehicles. It's incredible to see how AI is being applied to these real world problems that affect us all. What other examples stood out to you? The work being done by the Institute for Protein Design is mind-blowing. They're actually using Azure to engineer new proteins from scratch. Wow. Proteins are the building blocks of life. Yeah. So being able to design new proteins with specific functions could revolutionize so many fields. What kind of applications are we talking about? Imagine designing proteins that can break down pollutants. Okay. Create new materials or even target specific diseases. The possibilities are truly endless. This all seems incredibly futuristic, yet it's happening right now. Yeah. It's amazing to think that this is just the beginning. Exactly. As these AI technologies continue to evolve, we can expect even more groundbreaking applications to emerge in the years to come. Mm. It's an exciting time to be witnessing this technological revolution unfold. It's clear that AI is no longer a distant concept. It's here. It's evolving rapidly and it's already having a profound impact on our world. Okay, so we've seen how Microsoft is building this like powerful AI ecosystem, yeah. and we've explored some pretty incredible real-world applications. Uh -huh. But as with any, you know, transformative technology, right. there's uh there's another side to this story. Yeah. Nadella briefly touched on it in his keynote, uh -huh. and I think it's worth unpacking a little bit. Yeah, for sure. You're talking about the potential downsides of AI. The risks that come with handing over so much control to algorithms. It's like we're opening Pandora's box, right? Exactly. We need to be sure we're not unleashing something we can't control. Yeah. It's a valid concern, and to be fair to Nadella, he didn't shy away from it. He acknowledged that with great power comes great responsibility. Mm. He talked about the need for guardrails, for ethical frameworks to guide the development and deployment of AI. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a really important point. But what does that actually look like in practice? How do we ensure that AI is used for good and not for harm? Well, I think it starts with recognizing that AI systems are only as good as the data they're trained on. Right. If the data is biased, the AI will be biased. We need to be incredibly careful about the data sets we use to train these models, making sure they're diverse, representative, and free from harmful prejudices. So it's not just about the algorithms themselves, right. it's about the data that feeds them. Absolutely, and it's about transparency. People need to understand how these AI systems work, how they make decisions. It can't be a black box. That makes sense. If we're going to trust these systems, we need to be able to like see under the hood. Exactly. And then there's the question of accountability. Mm. Who's responsible if an AI system makes a mistake or worse, causes harm? Yeah. These are complex questions that we as a society need to grapple with as AI becomes more deeply integrated into our lives. It's a lot to consider, but it sounds like there's a growing awareness of these challenges, which is encouraging. There is, and it's not just lip service. Yeah. Organizations like Microsoft are actively working on solutions. They're developing tools to help developers identify and mitigate bias in their AI models. They're investing in research to make AI systems more transparent and explainable. So it's not just about sounding the alarm. Right. It's about actually finding solutions. Right. And it's a collaborative effort. Governments, industry leaders, researchers, everyone needs to be part of the conversation. It's a reminder that technology isn't neutral. It reflects the values of the people who create it and the societies in which it's deployed. Exactly. And as AI becomes more powerful, the stakes get higher. We need to be mindful of the potential for AI to exacerbate existing inequalities, to create new forms of discrimination. Yeah, Nadella touched on this briefly in his keynote, didn't he? He talked about the need for AI 
to benefit everyone, not just a select few. He did. And it's not just about access to AI technology. It's about access to AI education and training. We need to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to develop the skills they need to thrive in an AI powered world. So it's not just a technical challenge. It's a societal challenge. Yeah. It's about ensuring that AI serves humanity, not the other way around. I think that's a great way to put it. And that brings us back to you, the listener. As we've explored in this deep dive, AI is no longer a futuristic fantasy. Yeah. It's here, it's evolving rapidly, and it's already having a profound impact on our world. What struck you the most from Nadella's keynote? What are you most excited about? What concerns you? These are questions worth pondering as we navigate this, like, uncharted territory. We encourage you to continue exploring these ideas. Read more about AI ethics, engage in conversations about the potential benefits and risks, ask questions about how AI is being developed and deployed in your industry, in your community. This is a conversation that needs to happen at all levels of society. The choices we make today will determine the course of the AI revolution and its impact on our future. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We sure. From the mind-blowing capabilities of Copilot to the profound ethical considerations surrounding AI, it's clear that we're at a, a pretty pivotal moment in history. As always, we encourage you to keep learning, keep exploring, and keep asking questions. Yeah. Because in the age of AI, knowledge is power. And the more we understand this technology, the better equipped we'll be to shape its future. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll be back soon with another fascinating exploration of the latest trends and ideas shaping our world.